Hey, I'm Annabelle, nurse, birth doula, and mama, and I'm here to build your confidence in birth and motherhood. Today we're talking about breastfeeding for first time moms. If you are pregnant right now and you're thinking about breastfeeding, or if you're already breastfeeding and you're having some complications, some obstacles, some difficulties, I'm here to give you some tips to help you successfully breastfeed and love it. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and ring that bell to stay up to date to my latest content. going to give you six tips here that are really going to help you overcome some obstacles and successfully breastfeed. If you're having some difficulties, don't be discouraged. Don't think that, man, I just wasn't made to breastfeed. I'm going to switch over to formula because my body wasn't made to do this. Most moms have some sort of complication, some sort of obstacle or difficulty with breastfeeding. There are a few moms that start breastfeeding and everything just goes perfectly, nothing ever happens, and they love the experience because nothing happened and they had that bonding. But most moms have some sort of obstacle before they learn to love to breastfeed. And so I want to encourage you with tip number one, you can do this. A lot of mom thinks, a lot of moms think that, oh, maybe my breast size just isn't the right size. I have small breasts, I'm not gonna be able to produce milk. The size actually doesn't matter whether you have very large breasts or small breasts. You can produce milk, large breasts store a lot of milk, whereas small breasts just don't store as much between feeds. So you might just have to feed a little bit more often. What about flat nipples? A lot of moms are concerned about that. Well, there are ways to overcome that. You can really start to just stimulate your breast before baby comes to breast and get that nipple to be a little bit more erect before baby comes to breast. So lots of different tips and tricks to make sure that you have a good latch, but most likely you have a good breast to be able to breastfeed. It's a very, very tiny percent of women that just cannot breastfeed for some reason because of the shape of their breast or nipple. So you can do this based off of that, but also you can do this because you can remember all of the benefits that are coming to baby and to you that can get you through the hard times. I'm sure you've probably heard that breast is best, don't formula feed, baby needs that breast milk. Well, there are some great benefits to breastfeeding for baby. Decreased risk of infection, decreased risk for SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome, baby has great bonding time with mom, good growth and development, but there's also great benefits for you, mama. You need your body to get back to that pre-pregnant state after you give birth, and breastfeeding helps with that. Your uterus is gonna contract down very quickly when you breastfeed. That bleeding is gonna stop faster when you're breastfeeding. Your weight's gonna come down faster when you breastfeed. But long-term, you're actually going to have decreased risk for breast cancer and also ovarian cancer. So let's decrease those risks for cancer by helping you breastfeed. Tip number two, how does it all work? It's a beautiful, intricate process that your body is capable of. Your baby is going to come to breast, hopefully right after birth, you're gonna get that skin to skin, and baby's gonna start rooting and looking for your breast. Baby is hungry. You and baby just worked very hard through that birthing process, and it's time for you to eat and for baby to eat. Baby is going to eat colostrum at that first feed. That colostrum is thick, it's yellow, it's kind of sticky, it's high fat, high in vitamins and minerals, and also works as a laxative to help baby get that meconium, that sticky poop to move through, help baby to get the waste products out of baby's system, help the gut to really start working. Great benefits of that colostrum. So your baby is eating this high fat colostrum in the first couple days of life. And every time you bring baby to breast to eat, there is stimulation of the breast and there is stretching of the nipple with that sucking. And this is what is telling your brain to release hormones to produce milk. And as your milk starts to come in, maybe around day three, maybe day two, maybe day three, maybe day four, depending on the situation, depending on your body. If you had skin to skin right away, your baby started breastfeeding right away, maybe you had a C-section, so it was a few hours. And so the timing of your milk coming in, it might be a few days, might be right away. 
just be patient, make sure that you continue to bring baby to breast because every time you bring baby to breast and you have that stimulation and you have that stretching with the sucking, that is what is going to bring your milk in. And you're gonna feel some warmth, some tingling, maybe a little bit of aching, some fullness in your breast when your milk finally comes in. So now maybe you're at home, baby still getting some colostrum, you feel like, okay, my milk's starting to come in. Should I have a schedule? That brings me to my next tip. Tip number three, mix your schedule with no schedule. There are a lot of moms that really love a schedule. It helps them stay organized and feel like, okay, my life is not just absolute chaos right now. And then there's other moms that say, no, I really just wanna watch my baby. If baby wakes up, I'll feed baby, but otherwise, I'm not going to wake baby up. But I really like to mix the both because that's life. We have to kind of adapt and change based on circumstances. Your newborn really gets dehydrated very quickly and has a very small stomach, about the size of a cherry seed. So your baby is going to need to eat frequently. Also, you're trying to get your milk to come in and really get established, which that means the breast needs to be stimulated and stretched very frequently. So the rule of thumb is feed baby every two hours. Don't wait more than four hours. Okay, so if you sit down at eight o'clock to feed your baby and your baby is tired, your baby keeps falling asleep and feeds, it might take up to an hour to feed your newborn. So if you're supposed to feed every two hours, you're supposed to feed at eight, 10, 12, and so on. So you sit down at eight and it takes an hour to feed your baby. That's nine o'clock when you're finished. And then you have to feed again at 10. That is not a lot of time to get stuff done. And so a lot of moms feel like that's overwhelming. And so they kind of have to flex their schedule a little bit because maybe at eight o'clock they sit down to feed and if it takes till nine, but then they need to go out and do some errands and they have to be back before 10. And so they flex it a little bit. So that is okay to flex your schedule a little bit. Now, waking babies. That's a big concern. I really shouldn't wake my baby up. Well, your baby might just wanna sleep through a feed and you know I need to make sure that my breast is stimulated so that my milk comes in and I really need to make sure that my baby is not becoming dehydrated and gets good nutrition and so I'm gonna wake baby up instead of just watching for cues. When I say cues, I'm talking about baby is starting to wake up, starting to smack th their lips, rooting, which means looking for the breast, and crying. But crying is a very late sign of needing to eat, so really you should never wait to that point before you feed your baby. Don't wait until baby's crying. It's very difficult to get a latch at that point. Baby is past hungry, maybe past dehydrated. Make sure that when you see those first signs, those lips smacking, the rooting, turning baby's head, that you're like, okay, that's my cue. It's time to eat right now before baby gets too hungry. So schedule or no schedule, mix the two. Make sure that you have somewhat of a schedule so that you're not letting baby go too long before eating. Make sure that you're watching baby more than you're watching the clock so that you understand, okay, it hasn't even been two hours, but baby is rooting, it's time to eat now because those cluster feeds happen, that baby is growing and developing and you might have to feed hourly every 30 minutes, every 45 minutes in those first two weeks for six weeks, and then after that, things really spread out more. I want to encourage you that those two hours don't stay forever. After those six weeks, your feeds will spread out a little bit, and your milk will get established to where it's, it's in. You don't necessarily have that fullness anymore because your milk amount has acclimated to how much your baby is eating. It's an amazing process, so you won't still have that fullness, that heaviness. You'll have comfortable breasts, and your baby will be eating maybe every four hours at that point. My son is eight and a half weeks right now and he's eating about every four hours. And as he grows and develops even more, that time period will spread out even a little bit more. He stays awake through his whole feed so he really gets satisfied and then he can go longer periods of time between feeds. His stomach's a little bit bigger now so he can hold more milk at a time. And so it really does spread out. Tip number four is getting a good position and a good latch. This is so important to make sure that you don't have pain during breastfeeding. Baby is satisfied after a feed and you both can have a good experience together. 
So like I said, there should not be pain. If you have pain with breastfeeding, you really need to talk to a lactation consultant and make sure that baby's not tongue tied, baby is getting a good latch. So what does a good position and a good latch mean? It means that you're not hearing slurping, you're hearing some gulping, maybe some swallowing, and that baby is satisfied and baby has plenty of wet diapers during the day, at least six wet diapers a day, and you're seeing at least one poopy, usually two to three, maybe four poopy diapers a day. You always wanna bring baby to you. You don't wanna to go to baby to breastfeed. You'll hurt your back, so you always wanna bring baby to breast. If you have to use a pillow or some sort of support under your arms, I definitely encourage that. So you always bring baby to you. You always make sure that baby has a wide mouth before you put baby onto your nipple and that baby really gets a good hold over all of your nipple, even the areola, that you're not just having baby sucking at the very tip of your nipple. So baby's all the way on your breast. Baby's lips are like fish lips, out like this. You're making sure that baby has a clear airway so their nose is not squished up against your breast, but the chin is touching your breast. And after you have all of that, you have a good position, baby has a good latch, baby is getting good milk and you're hearing baby swallow, maybe seeing a little bit of milk drip down the side of baby's mouth, you know that you have a good latch. And with this, you shouldn't experience any cracking or breaking of the nipple. If you don't have a good latch, you notice that baby's just right at the end of your nipple, don't just yank baby off of your breast. Use your finger like a hook in baby's mouth, break the seal, and baby will release. And then you can start the process over again. You can hold baby in so many different positions when you breastfeed. Don't feel like you just have to stick with one position. You can do a cradle hold where baby's head is in the crease of your elbow and coming to breast. You can do a cross cradle where you use the opposite arm to hold baby's head. You can do a football hold to the side. This is great if you have a clogged duct or if you've had a C-section and you don't want baby laying on your incision. You can lay down in bed and have baby laying next to you and both of you on your sides coming to breast. And then as baby gets older, you can even have baby sit on your lap and come to breast sitting up. So there's lots of different ways. Experiment, whatever works best for you and is comfortable, you're probably gonna change based on just what chair you're sitting in and how many times you've sat in that same position during the day. So try a lot of different things, but make sure that you have a good latch and that you're comfortable for a long period of time. Again, don't slump over to baby. It's so easy to do. Bring baby to you. Tip number five is to care for your breast and your nipples. Again, you should not have pain with breastfeeding, but that doesn't mean that complications cannot arise, which then can cause pain with breastfeeding. And so we want to overcome those obstacles. We wanna make sure that you don't have those complications. And if they do arise, that we treat them appropriately. So your number one tip for avoiding complications is a good latch. Baby has to have a good latch to make sure that you don't start having cracking and tearing of your nipple. And again, if baby has a tongue tie, that is something that needs to be medically treated and it will help baby have a good latch and really get good milk during breastfeeding. So definitely make sure that in the hospital when the pediatrician does their assessment that you maybe specifically ask like, does baby have a tongue tie? Like, did you check that? Is that something I need to be concerned about? When the lactation consultant comes to your room in the hospital, say, is this a good latch? Is baby having a hard time latching on, et cetera. So getting a good latch. Making sure that your nipples stay moist. In the past, it was recommended that your nipples would be dried out, but that's not recommended. And I don't necessarily recommend buying any sort of oil or lotion for your nipple. There's a lot of organic brands out there that are safe for mom and baby, but honestly, your breast milk is the best treatment. So after baby feeds at the breast, I recommend that you just express a little bit of milk from your nipple and your breast by just squeezing it and rubbing that breast milk around your nipple and then just letting your nipples maybe rest in the air without putting your nursing bra right back on if you can, if you're in that environment. And so just really using that breast milk is an amazing treatment. When you shower, don't 
wash your breast and nipples with soap. There's a lot of natural oils on your breast that are great and that soap will just wash it all off. So just rinse with water, wash your whole body but then with soap, but then just rinse your breast and your nipples with water. If you do experience any dryness, redness, tearing, bleeding, etc. There are a lot of different products that you can use that are very helpful. So for one, a nipple shield might be something that you need. And so again, talking to a lactation consultant, they can really help you understand if a nipple shield would be useful and appropriate for you. It's not something you wanna use long-term and you really wanna make sure that it is necessary because it can cause some confusion, some nipple confusion with your newborn. So talking to a lactation consultant about that. There's also things that you can buy off of Amazon. Um, silverettes, these are just like almost little bowls that are made out of silver that are the size of your nipples and you put them on your nipples before you put your bra back on. And that just protects your nipples from being squished by your bra, the rubbing of the fabric, great if you're having some pain, then they can heal and just are protected by that silver for a little while. So care for your breast. They need your ultimate attention so that you can have successful breastfeeding. If you're having pain, seek help. And that brings me to my last tip, surround yourself with help from the beginning, before you even experience any obstacles or complications, making sure that before you give birth, that you kind of have an idea of your resources in your city, that if your mom has breastfed, that you ask her questions. If you have some girlfriends that have breastfed, that you surround yourself with them and ask them questions and really get that encouragement, positive encouragement. Surround yourself with support groups that you can find maybe on Facebook or in your town, making sure that you know a lactation consultant in the area that you can go to after you leave the hospital. Make sure that your pediatrician supports breastfeeding and that you have friends and family that can answer your questions, your very personal questions, things that you might feel like you don't wanna ask somebody, but that you trust this person to ask. I hope these tips were very helpful for you, mama. I know that breastfeeding is a beautiful experience, but it takes time to overcome some of those obstacles. I know that you can do it. If you have any questions for me, let me know in the comment section below. I would love to answer them. I'll see you in the next video. Yeah, bye. We're gonna show them how to hold the baby, okay? Can you show them how you hold your baby at breastfeed? Yeah. Okay. So 